welcome to this week's look at the uh, COVID-19 uh, figures. The sun's just broken out in Manchester city centre, so let's see if the figures are anywhere near as uh, rosy. We're going to start as always with the seven day rate of positive cases per 100,000 uh, population. You will see now that there is most definitely a trend within these uh, uh, figures that they're all on a downward trajectory. Um, and every single place has come down since uh, a, a week ago, but you can see the trend over the, the last th uh, three weeks, uh, putting us into a far better position. I get a better analysis of that though on the next slide. So if we if we go to that one, and th this this is a slide that looks at the age uh, profile, and I'll draw your attention first of all to the top two lines. The top line is the over 65s, and you see that that now is uh, pale and getting very much paler. And on this particular chart, pale is good. But similarly for the 45 to 64 year olds, we see that the trend across as you go from right to left again is for that to becoming paler, not at quite the same rate, but again, really important that we're making progress in that age group because this is really taking out totality of the age groups where people, if they do get COVID, have a higher risk of being hospitalised and a higher risk of serious illness. So it's also worth looking right at the bottom of uh, this and uh, the 0 to 15 age band, uh, because you'll see in some places it's clearer than others, but effectively when schools went back, when we got an increase in positive tests, and you can almost see where the Easter holidays started as well, where we had a sudden dip. Um, I think it will be reasonable to expect that when, uh, as schools go back after the Easter holidays, uh, we'll see a little bit of an upturn in that line uh, again. Although, uh, again, we would hope, as happens when schools went back before Easter, that will still be within the tolerances that Sage have suggested would be normal. If we go to the next slide, uh, this is what's happening in, in care home residents. It stayed static over the uh, last week, but we're now in that, uh, I suppose, fortunate position that the numbers are sufficiently low that they can be very easily distorted by a single outbreak anywhere in Greater Manchester. Uh, clearly, we want to keep them low. We'd like to get it even lower uh, if we can, but I think this is a, a, a position that we would feel relatively comfortable with and uh, something that we will improve on even as we move into a position where uh, care home residents are able to see more members of their families, something that's obviously going to be very, very welcome indeed. And if we go to the next one. So this is what's happening in our hospitals. And we did have a blip a week ago on weekly admissions for uh, COVID-19. We're now back on uh, trend, similarly for inpatient uh, diagnoses and uh, probably most importantly, seeing that continued reduction in uh, intensive care beds occupied with COVID patients and the overall number of beds being occupied. And you see that reflected down the very small print on this slide uh, where we have now uh, only 66% utilisation of that uh, ICU capacity. And that does mean that the planning that's taking place around recovery of being able to bring electives back uh, can continue with a bit more confidence that we are going to be able to uh, deliver not a rapid recovery. I'll repeat that the backlog that's uh, built up means it will take some considerable time to clear the backlog, but we can at least now plan with a certain amount of confidence. Uh, but confidence is something I'm going to raise on the next and final slide. So if we can move to that. And this is the uh, vaccination progress uh, slide. I've no doubt that the improvements we've seen on the previous slides is in large part down to uh, the success of the vaccination program and that we are particularly getting very high numbers of those people who are most vulnerable being vaccinated. You see that we've got a 94% figure for the 70 uh, pluses and we're beginning to make progress on the under 50s uh, as well. Clearly that won't change much in April because the emphasis is on second doses and we're beginning to see particularly for the 70 pluses uh, 
a, a significant figure of people having their second vaccination now. And whilst I'm not quite in that age age range, I will be in about two weeks time, uh, I can say that I successfully had my own second vaccine at uh, Cheetah Irish Centre earlier this week. The progress that we've made could easily be lost if people think, OK, the problem's all over. Getting that sec second vaccination is really, really important to keep us on the right trajectory uh, to make sure that we are able to start returning life to something like normal as in the government's uh, roadmap. So please uh, let's urge everybody to make sure that they do go and get their second uh, second jab. Um, I think perhaps something else I ought to uh, refer to, something we discussed a week ago, is what's often described as uh, vaccine hesitancy and particularly uh, those communities where there has been uh, a reluctance to get uh, vaccinated. Talked to and referred you last week to a lot of the work that's going on to tackle that. We are beginning to make uh, real progress in that area. It's important that we keep those efforts up to make sure that uh, all of our communities have proper protection from this terrible disease. And I think that is the end of uh, this week's slides. And this is what the numbers look like. It's uh, overall, it is a uh, a good story and a good story that's getting better. But as I said very many times, we're not completely out of the woods uh, yet and we need to maintain our effort to make sure that we can make sure that we, we can have th that normal life that we all want.